uh, into the living room and the uh, fellow in Mexico spent $600,000 on a weekend house. I mean, it's, uh, it tends to put more romance than I figured into an, into an architect's life, you know. It's a <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's good. I, uh, uh, <laughs> I've yeah. been aiming at individuals. Well, I have so many now that I forget a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, I, I remember the. <clears throat> th this is not a, uh, not a funny one. It's just a, uh, an architectural thing that somebody said I should point out next time, and I don't don't even have a picture of that house in in this group. It, uh, I had a house that burned down, and the the people built it back exactly as it was because they they loved it so and uh, they said uh, you, sh you should mention that and I'd, I'd forgotten that that, that 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 had happened and it is a an interesting thing to have happen but what you're talking about are I don't know uh, <coughs> they're uh, most they're they're the I suppose well one one example of that kind of work was the the one in Palm Springs the uh, that all concrete when the client's uh, uh, request to me was to uh, give him what I thought he should have on that lot and uh, that that's a real and, and I did it and he did it without changing it so the, uh, the that's why it turned out it uh, it, uh, it it's exceptional that that you have that much freedom, but on the but on the other hand, uh, uh, when you're working with individuals who are individuals and who are not just uh, uh, dyed in the wool or in a rut of some sort, uh, they come to me for an individual solution, and that, that that's what I was aiming at because I I felt that the architect should contribute individual solutions for for everything and I, I I could never understand the repetitive kind of solution because I felt that that could uh, could probably be done in some other way and I I usually call out a facility that's the same as they do in the newspapers they say new new 50 million dollar facility it's not, it's not architecture it's just a facility I think that uh, they 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 pretty much the first ones that I did were more difficult clients because uh, uh, well like one of them I had conferences for over a year uh, getting the plans the preliminary plans and uh, uh, but nevertheless it was I I, I made the final des design and final decision. And uh, so it, w it wasn't actually, I don't know whether you'd call it freedom or not. It's not, I mean, it was, it was a workout, but uh, it still happens, it still happens now. I mean, some of, some of the clients, uh, 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 it just depends on the people. Like I, I had one where I only had a 20 minute meeting <coughs> during the whole affair and uh, then another one meetings every night for a year, you know, different kinds of people. But but still, they uh, engaged me to to do the job, and and they they uh, respected my decisions. So it, it it's a it's a, there's never uh, complete freedom, I suppose. But uh, in fact, the, when they give you too much freedom, you, it's it's more difficult because you. Uh, it's easier to fit 
more limitations than, than, than if, if you have no limitations. <coughs> yes, most of them. I have quite a few that weren't, but not very many. Well, I think it is. I, uh, uh, I, I tell a, the client that I intend to get it built, and I don't want to make the plans for nothing or just for fun. And, uh, <coughs> and usually when they come to me, they want to get it built too, so we, we work it out somehow. Oh sure, I'd like to do. Uh, I'd like to have done the Los Angeles Civic Center. I could have <laughs> could have done done a lot better with it than they did. I'm I'm not afraid to say that, but uh, not being a politician, why, no chance. I uh, I looked into some of those things and I like the schools, colleges, and all that, and I found they were sewed up five years ahead of time, and God knows what. I couldn't I couldn't figure out how to get any of those jobs. all kinds of problems with that, but uh, I've found that the, the building department is really the, the most reasonable. The, the worst department is, are, is the finance department. They're, they just say absolutely nothing doing. And uh, for instance, I have an engineer friend who did a, a reinforced concrete building uh, uh, for Wilshire about 10, 15 years ago. He made a plastic model and found that the reinforcing should go in circles and the whole thing was minimum design, uh, but good design. And the uh, bankers turned it down, said they'd, uh, e even though it was less expensive building and a better building, they'd loan the owner uh, 50 or 100,000 more if they'd do it the same way as they did it 50 years ago in steel. So that, that's the worst part. But with the building code, uh, <coughs> you can go with uh, engineering, and you can go. You can appeal to the board. It used to be a board. Now there are different kinds of ways. But uh, the board was reasonable. In fact, every job I've ever done has had a, at least 20 or 30 things against the code, which uh, uh, doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with the design. There's just a the code is a compilation of, uh, of things that attempt some kind of legal protection for the public and unfortunately it covers in such detail that it uh, limits the architects and, and uh, but if you if you really want to do it you can and you present a reasonable case uh, you, you can uh, ultimately get it approved but it takes a lot of extra work and most people aren't willing to take the time or the work or pay for tests or anything else, but uh, I've uh, done that on almost every job. Yeah, well,
Well, the, uh, the architect in uh, South America and in various countries in the world have the responsibility and uh, this client that, uh, that, that you mentioned, we, we worked on trying to get it to work here and we almost got it through as, a, as an addendum to the code to allow architects to practice like doctors. And, uh, but it was just at the time when he split up with his partner and the whole thing, so he quit working on the project. But uh, I think it would be desirable and, uh, and, uh, and there's nothing wrong with it. The, what, of course, what happens, like in South America, if you have, have the responsibility and you, and you practice like a doctor and if you do something wrong or something that falls down, why well, you're, you're just out of business. And so <laughs> it works very well. I read an article in the Times recently um, regarding, I think there was a high school out in East Los Angeles, <coughs> the last remaining example of Gothic architecture and uh, for high schools. Anyway, so one of the comments in the article was that they are trying to save this building and uh, renovate it for earthquake-proof standards, um, trying to save it rather than construct something else because, quote, uh, craftsmanship is simply not what it used to be. And just from seeing general uh, institutional architecture, I agree wholeheartedly. But uh, noticing a great deal of craftsmanship in your own architecture, I was wondering if you had any comments on that. Well, any, anything that's uh, not standard is difficult now, and, uh, and uh, I, I think that uh, uh, it's a bad situation that uh, uh, we should continue with more, more variety and more human uh, kinds of things, and that the uh, people involved in the building industry should be more interested in, in the variety and uh, would enjoy their work. Well, the, the, the ab absolute <coughs> standardization of everything is deadly to everybody. It's a, it's a deadly thing to use. It's a deadly thing to work on. And, uh, and it's, uh, uh, it, it's not a sane uh, or civilized uh, way of uh, providing for human life. Well, I, I'm still um, got all kinds of things to do on this Hope residence. <laughs> I can uh, you can work work forever on a thing like that, and uh, then I have a couple of houses in Texas that are that are interesting, where a man's building a whole city, and he has a peninsula out into a lake, doing one there, and he may want me to. He asked me to if I. He may want me to do a 20-story condominium down there, which would be interesting, because he's open-minded. He doesn't uh, he, he doesn't do just what they say to do in the magazines, and uh, he's very independent. And then uh, I have another one on a ranch in Wyoming, where the man has 200 square miles. So it's sort sort of fun picking out a site, you know. <laughs> Com compared to a 50-foot lot, 30 foot. yeah, 30-foot <laughs> lot, and uh, another one in Cleveland, and uh, well, several, several other. <coughs> yes. Well, I think it's mostly a cliche kind of thing, or or a lot of a lot of the stuff has been uh, uh, succumbing to the contractors. You know, I think uh, uh, if a contractor says you got to do it just like that one next door in order to have the same price, why that's what they do, and so it's a business, and uh, it's not really architecture at all, unfortunately. Then, then it's I guess it's you know it's a combination of everything it's a the 
uh, when when uh, when the whole thing is a business, why the uh, the more the same, the better. It's a quick quicker way to make money, but. Uh, uh, I, I think the people should refuse it. I mean, when, like when I'm talking to a women's group, they, they like the, the architecture and they say, why can't we have some? And I say, well, because you buy that junk, see, and you, you, have, to, you have to stop buying the junk before you get anything good. And everybody puts up with whatever, whatever goes on, and it's, it's no good. Well, I have to find men that I work with regularly and uh, because uh, they have to be interested. Uh, they can't be just speculative because they, don't, they just don't care. Uh, they, they're, they're the, and they're more and more difficult to find. Oh, sure. But if there's a good man running the job, then he he does that, and that, that's what I try to do. I try to have a man that I know who cares about it, and then it's all right. But if there's not one man on the job who cares about it, uh, it's just a mess. Well, they're all they're all uh, right from scratch solutions. They're uh, they're uh, considering the whole scene, the site, the people, what they want to do, and and how to get the best out of the whole environment, and uh, and how to get a, a beautiful and and durable uh, space. And uh, for instance, that one uh, in Acapulco, I sat on the Usually, I sit on the lot and see what I, what I can see, and I, I decided that the best thing about that was the Acapulco Bay, and so I, I, uh, and they wanted a resort house, and that that's what they were there for, and so that solution ma makes the whole environment uh, as good as it could possibly be. And that's what I try to do with every one. And every one is a little different situation. And so you get different ideas as you think about it. Uh, uh, if you really get into it, you know, you have to get absorbed. I mean, you have to consider everything that's involved. I try to consider all the, all the physical materials, the engineering problems, the emotional, psychological problems, and everything under the sun and put it all in one idea. That's, that's, th that's the main thing. And uh, if you can get it into one idea, why uh, usually it, it's, uh, it becomes a piece of architecture. But if it's a, an assembly or a hodgepodge of cliches, it's, uh, it may be momentarily effective, but uh, pretty tiresome over the years. I don't know how to gossip. <laughs> well, this has nothing to do with philosophy. Yeah. Control, yeah. I uh, that's that's uh, uh, one of the reasons I'm in it. I, I started in in uh, architecture because I I thought it was one of the most interesting things you could do, and and uh, it's something uh, uh, important for uh, 
civilization, and uh, and it, it and, I, and it has an infinite variety of uh, problems and work. So uh, that was one of the reasons that I chose it. I felt that some of the other professions were apt to get into more of a rut, and I I, I had a horror of getting into a rut. So with this, you you just you just don't get into a rut. It, you just get more and more problems every day. <laughs> yeah. It, conceivably, you had a large manufacturing facility like you're mentioning with Ford or something. Could, would your constant, you know, since you're an individualistic kind of person and you're drawn that way, could your constant threatening to buy into the factory system you just pointed out, like mobile homes? Or oh, sure. Well, I, I would, uh, m m I, I think they could be and have a a pretty infinite variety too you know that that's that's what I meant and and what what I would do with that kind of a setup is uh, I'd build full-size models and I'd bring the bankers out and I'd say okay take it or leave it that's what Henry Ford did and uh, and you could you could really do it but I don't know of anybody that's bothered <coughs> Well, I think uh, I need a drink of water, or or I've done enough <laughs> for the evening. Thank you very much. Never sign a contract you don't understand completely, no matter what the salesman tells you. If you do decide to buy something, pay by check and make the check out to the company, not to the salesman. Remember, any offer is only as good as the reputation of the company that makes it. So take your time and find out about the company before you do business with them. Henry Kissinger's trip to communist China has been rescheduled. The new car sales in mid-October slipped nearly 16% as U.S. automakers report the third 10-day period in a row with lower sales. Chrysler Corporation chairman Lynn Townsend says wage price control should be eliminated. There's a reason true of any bond at any price and wage control program. It's Securities and Exchange it's Commission time. suit alleging massive fraud uh, by Westgate our California economy Corporation. Is so complicated and so bad. Seattle Smith when you said start of court uh, today, substituting a suit filed uh, May 21st, Smith and several business associates uh, and accused of scheming to defraud Westgate, the U.S. National Washington. Bank of San Diego, out of millions of dollars to create under a tentative agreement. Economy. Must be and we have seen uh, any number of those over this year. Chrysler Chairman Len Townsend. For CBS News, I'm Jim Gilpatrick.
and no further acts by an objectionable Morning, noon, and night. Get it through, get it right. Stay in tune with the 70. KNX News Radio, 1070 Los Angeles. Earl O'Brien, Secretary of Health and Welfare. At 10.06, this is Jim Key for KNX News Radio, your 50,000-watt news voice for Southern California. Now to major stories in Los Angeles and the West on this Wednesday, October 24th, 1973. According to California Representative John Moss, another teapot dome scandal is brewing in the West. Robert Finch, former advisor to President Nixon, says he regrets the way the controversy over the White House tapes was handled. A 48-hour strike notice has been filed by the Teamsters Union against the California wholesale liquor industry. Negotiations are continuing in efforts to reach a new contract agreement between members of the 16 Teamster Union locals and the Southern California wholesale grocery industry. From the KNX Weather Wire, the forecast for Los Angeles and vicinity fair night through Friday. Day. Overnight low temperatures near 54 degrees, highs tomorrow to 82. For Santa Barbara, Ventura County Coastal Area, the Santa Monica Bay, and the Orange County Metropolitan Area, it'll be fair through Friday with a chance of uh, gusty north and northeasterly winds below the coastal canyons. Low temperatures tonight to 54, highs tomorrow to 80. For the mountain areas of Southern California, fair tonight and through Friday, gusty northerly winds, overnight low temperatures to 34, high daytime temperatures to 74. For the interior and desert regions of Southern California, it will be fair tonight through Friday with gusty north and northeasterly winds along the Colorado River. <laughs>